I'm catching up on movie reviews, which means let's do it the way the great movie critics intended. Jam as many as we can into as few minutes as possible. Let's go. Hey, I'm Dan Merle, and there are several movies that came out this year that I never got a chance to review, either because I missed them in theaters, or they were in theaters for such a short time that they went to home VOD before I got a chance to see them, or they skipped theaters altogether. Well, I decided to remedy that by doing something a little different today. Instead of doing one video for each one of these movies, I decided to do five 2020 movies in five minutes. Why? Because I'm very bored, and I desperately need something new to do. So without further ado, let's start the clock. Five 2020 movies in five minutes. Go. First up is The Hunt from co-writer Damon Lindelof. It's about a group of right-wing deplorables who are brought to a remote farm to be hunted by some wimpy liberals. There was a lot of controversy around this movie. The, the release was actually delayed. It actually got delayed into this crisis. Um, the satire goes both ways. It wasn't what a lot of people thought it was, which is kind of a hit piece from the left to the right. But I found the satire to be kind of obvious and a little bit toothless. I, I thought it was playing into the most broad stereotypes for both groups. Guys... <laughs> We're all on the same team. Did you say guys? I'm sorry, I gendered it. This movie does a couple fun, interesting things with story and a couple and some good gags, but generally, maybe it is the timing. I just didn't find much pleasure in a movie that's exclusively about finding and making fun of the differences between us, particularly at a time when the entire country is in this crisis and when there's a large political divide right now over actual issues of real life and death every day. Maybe in a different time, I would have enjoyed The Hunt more, but as it stands, it was really unpleasant as an experience for me. Uh, not something that I recommend. Uh, it just may be a case of bad timing. Next up is Emma, the feature debut from director Autumn DeWilde and writer Eleanor Catton. And you know, I didn't have a whole lot of issues with this movie on a technical level or on a performance level. Uh, it, the cast was great. The movie looks beautiful. I just have a problem with Jane Austen. Not like we're beefing or anything. She didn't do anything to offend me, and I hope I didn't do anything to offend her. It's just that I have difficulty getting into the material itself. I tried to read Pride and Prejudice in high school, and I couldn't do it. Uh, I tried to get into Love and Friendship a few years ago, and then this movie also. All very well regarded. I just have have a tough time penetrating uh, the, 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 the barrier of that text and that source material for me. It is Frank Churchill's duty to pay this attention to his father. He also has a duty to his aunt who is unwell. It's like when people say that they want to get into Star Trek and they just can't do it. That's how I feel about Jane Austen. So it's not a movie that I can give my full recommendation to, uh, but not because of anything that the movie did. Emma and Jane Austen, it's not you, it's me, it's my problem, but uh, I did get on board by the end, so that's good for you. Next up is The Gentleman, the latest from Guy Ritchie, and of course it is an intertwining story of crime in, in the UK and all the things that we expect from Guy Ritchie, although you can kind of see the fact that he's showing his age a little bit because it's actually Hugh Grant telling a story to Charlie Hunnam for a major part of the movie. It doesn't quite have that same propulsive energy, uh, but I, I've liked Guy Ritchie's work, particularly his, his stories about crime, Lock, Stock, and Two Smoking Barrels, and Snatch in the past, so I enjoyed this one to a lesser degree than a of the other ones. You have a great cast in addition to Charlie Hunnam and Hugh Grant. You've got Matthew McConaughey doing his best Lincoln ad VO all throughout the movie. If you wish to be the king of the jungle, it's not enough to act like a king. You also have Colin Farrell, although it was very distracting because Colin Farrell in this movie looks almost exactly like my manager in the Schmodown, Finstock. So it took me out of the movie, but again, that's not Guy Ritchie's fault. Uh, but I would say it's a tamer version of what you've seen from Guy Ritchie before. But if you like the crime capers, if you like the twisty plots, you're going to like this movie. It's textbook Guy Ritchie. Next up is Trolls World Tour, and I'm not going to spend too much time talking about it because I want to spend more time talking about the next movie. It's for kids. It's 100% for kids. It is 100% not for adults. Kids will probably love it. Adults, you will barely be able to tolerate it. Plus, I got so lost in the weeds with this troll lore. There's different music and songs and strings and genres and why are trolls popping out of people's heads? Listen, it's for kids. No, it's for kids. It's not for adults. And finally is Bloodshot from Vin Diesel, and it is the role that Vin Diesel was born to play, or at least the role that he thinks he's born to play. He plays a hero soldier who can lift impossible amounts of weight, punch through walls, and he also has a super brain. This is what Vin Diesel has been dreaming of his entire life. When Vin Diesel looks in the mirror, this is the Vin Diesel that he sees staring back at him. This, of course, is a movie that is based on a comic book series, a valiant comic book series that I had back in the 90s. It's finally made its way to the big screen. It's got the big red light from the 
comics, although in the movies it looks like kind of an E.T. Heartlight, which is weird. You have Guy Pierce doing the Mandarin thing. He's still outfitting soldiers with new arms and legs and stuff. Is he on the up and up and up? Is he not? That's what a lot of the movie is about. The story does take an interesting turn, but I wish it had done more with it. You basically have a lot of action and stuff and a lot of setup, and then everything sort of hinges on this one revelation, but then what comes after it isn't too much different from what came before it, so you don't really deliver on that too well. It is a vehicle for Vin Diesel to do some truly impressive yelling. I swear I will find you and end you. What more could you ask for? Your best version of me! Not mine! And you get a great Toby Kebble dance scene. Look out, Sam Rockwell. There's a new dancer in town, and his name is Toby Kebble. Fa, 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 Overall, I think that Bloodshot had more potential than actual delivery. Really just another forgettable action film, and notable mainly for the fact that it came out during this pandemic. And time. So there you go. Five movie reviews in five minutes for 2020 films. And you know what? There are actually a lot more that I could do. So if you like this format, if you like me zipping through a lot of these movies, because let's be honest, a lot of them are forgettable and probably don't deserve their own video, let me know down in the comments below. Also, be sure to like, share, subscribe, and if you want even more of this kind of nonsense, join me over at patreon.com slash danmerle. We're building a great community over there. As a matter of fact, here are just a few of the amazing producer-level patrons who help me keep things running. Uh, it's been so great to meet so many people and get to interact and talk to so many new people and returning friends from the Screen Junkies days. I've really had a good time. Uh, please join me over there, and join me next time right here for the latest news, reviews, charts, you name it, right here on YouTube. YouTube. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you next time.